Hi, this is Bob from Hobby Concepts. I've been thinking about a load for my globe liner, and uh, Remo Toys contacted me uh, a couple weeks ago and said, Hey, how'd you like to review one of our kits? So I looked at their website, found this WPL kit of a Toyota Land Cruiser. It comes as a hard top, it's got a little hard top and a bulkhead. I cut that off, modified it, painted it, uh, weathered it up. Uh, it was a fun build, I had a great time doing it. I'll have links in the description, but boy, it turned out great. It's only $100. It was a, a really fun little truck. It runs great. Makes a nice looking load for my globe liner. So, hey, let's get started. Okay, so here's my my kit. Um, and uh, the box is a little hammered, but everything inside looks pretty good. I haven't even really opened it yet. Uh, the parts are all packed in individual bags. And uh, yeah, everything looks pretty good. That's heavy. Looks like, uh, oh, the rear axles are all metal. Those are nice. Comes with a servo. And looks like a couple of leads, maybe for some lights. Uh, the transmission is assembled. We'll pull that apart later. Looks like axles and shafts. Tires. Ah, the wood uh, rear decking. Uh, oh, nice. Metal frames and they're powder coated in kind of a wrinkle finish. That looks good. Oh, that's heavy too. Interesting. Maybe wheel weights? Probably. Uh, windshields and instruction sheet. So I will peruse this for a few minutes and come back and we'll talk about it. Okay, taking a look at this, there's uh, two sets of instructions. One's in English, uh, sort of English, and the other one is in um, Chinese. But basically you've got the body assembly up here and the chassis assembly down here and on the back side. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble the chassis first. Uh, while I play with the body. I, I took some of the main body pieces and, uh, and just stuck them together because I was trying to decide if I wanted to make it a convertible or a hard top. Um, the top comes off, uh, top comes off and this back comes off and it might make a nice convertible. Um, there's the, the bed piece back here. Uh, as I get going on this, I just wanted to make a couple comments. The kit comes with um, two servos, a steering servo and a shift servo. Um, because it's got a two-speed transmission, I'm like, are you kidding me? I didn't really look at it that close when I, when I ordered it. It's got a full set of ball bearings, um, 16 ball bearings, and they're really nice. These axles, housings, are all metal. They're, they're cast aluminum. The diff covers are metal. The hub carriers for the front and steering arms, those are metal. Um, it's got beautiful little uh, drive shafts that, that are really nice. I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually uh, really impressed with the quality of this thing. It came with um, some grease and some Loctite. I'll probably use my own grease. Um, and it came with a couple of uh, uh, five millimeter LEDs. I'm assuming those are for the headlights with a plug to power them off of the receiver. Um, it does not come with a speed control radio or battery. So um, I'm gonna I dig around and see what I've got here for those. But I'll go ahead and start um, assembling this. And, and the very first step is assembling these little shocks. And the shocks shaft just drops through. This rod end fits on here. And uh, just tightens in. Very similar to the way Tamiya shocks fit together. And the spring drops in. And this little cap just snaps over the top. 
there's our four shocks. Next step are to uh, put together these metal side frames. They just have a, a brass ball that bolts on and they come with three millimeter lock nuts, so no Loctite required. The only thing I've important here is to build a left and a right. So there's our side frames. I assume they go something like that. Next step is setting up the transmission. I soldered a couple wires on here just so I could run the motor and, uh, and test the shifting. And the way this works is um, this shift rod goes in and then that reduces it to the low gear. So what they do is they, they've got a little servo here. I attached an arm and then it just drops in here like this. And when the servo turns, it pushes this in. So just have to screw that down and uh, transmission will be ready to install. So I built up this side frame, um, mounted the shocks, mounted the two cross braces. The shocks just mount with one screw from the back side. And they tell you in the instructions to be careful and not tighten it too tight. So then this side We'll just mount like this. And I will screw that together. The front bumper bracket mounts through this hole up here, which ties everything together and uses a little bit different screw. There's a longer screw with a smaller head, so it fits down inside here. And then the bumper just slides over these and mounts with a screw from the back, back side. I painted my bumper with some Tamiya Mica Silver and then uh, some Tamiya Clear Flat. I'm going to go with a flat, weathered look when I'm done with this. So I'll put these together. The steering servo just arm mounts on it and drops in. It's a very nice solid fit and then they just tell you to put a screw in here to hold it down. I'm going to just add a three millimeter washer to give the screw a little more bite and mount that down. And then this piece, I guess I'll call it the engine compartment, mounts on top right here. Uh, it's designed so a, a small battery will fit in here. I assume the receiver will fit in here. I'm not going to mount this now because I'm going to have to put a speed control and probably some other bits out here and wire it through. So I'll go ahead and get the servo mounted down, then we'll move on to the, uh, the front and rear end. So I'm going to look at the front axle first, and uh, it came with this already put together. So I'm going to do one at a time so I don't mix up any parts. So that screw comes off and then this cap should just probably pop off and these to separate. Now it's not really a differential because <laughs> the axle's solid. So our bevel gear slides on here, holds with a set screw and then it drops in like this. We use a bearing and a bearing on each end. And then the bevel gear here drops through this with a bearing on each end. So I'll put those pieces together and then we'll uh, put this halves together. So you can see my shaft. I've got a ball bearing in each location. And this just drops over the top and then I put a ball bearing on each end here and 
this fits in like that. I'm just test fitting these right now. Add some grease to them. Okay, well that uh, that fits just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and grease those and bolt that together. Now when I bolt this cover on, this cover on, it bolts this one on at the same time. So I'm probably only going to put one bolt in it because I'm not sure if I have to loosen the set screw and adjust the axle in that a little bit. So I'll go ahead and do that. Well, this little uh, front axle is pretty straightforward. This uh, making sure the bearing is still in there. This coupler just drops over there. Line up the, the flat spot first. And then a set screw just fits in there. There's uh, the two larger bearings press into the steering knuckle. And then it just slides over here. There's a bushing that drops in. And then a screw with some Loctite. And then we'll have the, the axle assembly finished. Now the front end's done. Everything rotates just fine. There's no weird gear things. Um, this bracket now mounts on top here. A couple of long bolts go through and then these uh, nut plates go on the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, do that. And then I'm going to put together all the links. And there's a whole bunch of them. Some of them are cranked, some of them are straight. Uh, they just have the ends that screw on. I'm obviously going to do it off camera because my my fingers don't work worth a darn. Uh, and then in the instructions they give you the length. They make three of them this length, four of them this length, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to put all those together and measure them. And uh, then I can move on to the next step. You can see I've assembled the links. I'm going to go ahead and assemble the rear end um, right now. And it assembles exactly the same as the front end. The shaft is longer. And since there's no steering, it's just a solid axle all the way through. So I'm going to get that put together and um, operating like the front. You can see I added the steering link on here. This is pretty easy. The only adjustment is to make sure that there's maybe just a little tiny bit of toe in. Um, so got that put together. Build this and then I'll put all these links on. Well this is uh, really quite um, fascinating how this goes together. So this, uh, this truss bolts on the front and the rear uh, differentials just with a couple bolts and a nut plate on the bottom. And then these links all attach. Now there's two different lengths. There's a, a shorter length and a longer length. There's also an uh, even shorter length that's called a panhard bar and that goes someplace else. And there's these crank links. So the, the shorter links go on the front and you have to snap a ball through them. Now, it's interesting because there's actually two different balls. Oh, great, my stupid hand. Um, one of them has longer ends on it, and one of them shorter. So the bars that go in here, you push a longer one through, and that fits nicely in between that bar and a bolt goes through. So one link goes on the front, and two go on the back in the upper position and then in the lower position they just screw in. Now you don't need Loctite on this one because it's screwing into plastic but the bolt that holds the top ones to go through I think has a lock nut on it all. Take a look at that in a minute. So those mount like this and then 
the bolt goes through this top one and two of them fit here in the back. So I'll put that on. Once the links are on, you just snap this all together. So the bottom link goes to the bottom ball. Top link goes to the top ball. Same on this side. Bottom link, top link. And then the shocks. Just mount. And there we go. So that gives you a, a nice amount of flexibility. You can see I already snapped the front on. Same thing. Nice amount of flexibility. Now, one thing about this type of suspension is these will move back and forth. So, in order to compensate for that, they use a bar that goes and probably goes from here to here. And then our steering link link is going to go from here to here. And that's this cranked link that goes like that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll put this one on. It's called a panhard bar. And that's the shortest one. And then I'll and then I'm sure they have a a bar that goes somewhere back here sideways. So I'll check that out. Well, I, I popped the front suspension back off and added this ball here for the, uh, the panhard link, which is this short link. And this ball here for the steering link. I also added a ball here for the panhard link, and I do have to install a ball for the there's another ball here for the steering link on this uh, servo horn. So I'm going to go ahead and install that ball, and then I will re-snap all this into position. Uh, the drive shafts they don't even uh, really show in the instructions how to assemble them. This is the rear drive shaft. But basically, this uh, drive in, there's a small pin with a hole in it that fits through here. <clears throat> this cup then drops over that and this little pin slides through it. A little bit of a trick to get it in there. Especially when you got a broken thumb. But it's important, so I want to show this. Okay, the pin goes all the way through. And you can see the pin right there on both sides. And then this little snap ring just slides over the top and rests in a groove that holds the pin in and then these just snap together like this and there we go so there's our drive shafts they use a set screw to go onto the motor shaft and to the front and rear drive shaft. So now I've got to drop this into place, the motor, and four screws hold it on, and then my drive shafts will mount in between. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble that, and that pretty much is going to finish up the chassis. I screwed in the uh, transmission, hooked the drive shafts on. Everything works just like it's supposed to. I always like to continue to test things with my good old D battery. And everything is turning and working fine. Obviously, if it runs on one and a half volts, 
then I've got really no drag in the system. So now I'll put the tires and wheels together and then I can move on to the body. The uh, wheels were black. I painted them with some Tamiya mica silver and then some clear flat. Uh, you can see I've got one of the wheels assembled and I've got a couple of these assembled with the weights on them. The weights just clamp around the wheel. Um, I did one and found that the, the weights rattled so I put a little piece of du double sticky tape inside the weight to keep it from rattling. And then these clips, they just fit in there to hold them. You can see I've got the clips installed here. They're, they're difficult to install, especially with my thumb, so uh, I'll do that in a bit. And then the tires just fit on there. The tires are nice and soft. Uh, one of the things I've always thought about the more toy type of RC vehicles is they always have really hard tires, and these tires are great. Um, they're very soft. I'll need to glue them to the rims. So I will finish those up and then they've got an, an adapter that just slides over the hex. Actually on the rear axle there's a collar that fits on there first. And then a screw holds them on. So I can go ahead and mount those and my chassis will be complete. So with the chassis complete it's time to get on to the body. I've uh, I've actually done a couple things. I, I sprayed this black plastic just with clear flat to knock down the shine and these wood strips mount on top of here. But I actually like the look of the color they've chosen to do them in so I'm going to go ahead and bolt those down. I've decided to leave it as a, as a soft top. I'm not going to install this back bulkhead or the top part. So I'm going to cut these nubs off the windshield frame and clean that up. I'm going to build, uh, take a little piece of plastic and fill this in to make it look better. And I'm going to take the doors and actually just cut off this part of the frame so they only have the wing window. Uh, to give it a little more of a convertible uh, appearance. And on the uh, bed, I'm going to cut this upper part of the uh, headache rack off, leaving just the bottom part. And that'll uh, go on to here. I'm going to weather it, and so I decided I'm going to paint it a light blue with weathering. I've primered some of the parts, like the seat, which was black, and I'm going to paint that brown. The interior I'm going to leave black, but I'll spray it with some clear flat with brown seats and probably brown trim. And the inner door panels I'll also do in brown. So I'm going to do a little bit of work on prepping these parts and then we'll do some painting. You can see I made a little plastic piece to cover up the, the slots in the back here and primered this. I'm going to go ahead and paint all the body parts with this Tamiya. XF23 light blue. I think that'll be kind of a neat color. I also mounted the deck boards on that back plate and sprayed some clear flat on the floorboards. Um, I'm going to do the seats in brown, so I'll do some airbrushing and be back. Well, with the chassis complete, it's time to start finishing the body. I painted it with, uh, to me, a flat light blue. I, I wanted get that kind of faded blue look and I think I got it. It turned out pretty nice. Uh, I painted some of the interior components brown, dash, the seats, and I'm going to do a little bit of weathering before I start assembling. You can see the difference in these two seats. Um, this one has got some Tamiya black panel line marker on it, which basically just runs into all the the slots here. So I just let it run in and then wipe it off with a with a paper towel. And I'm going to be doing some weathering on various parts. Um, I'm going for that beat up kind of old school look. 
and I think I will get it. So I'll do some basic weathering on these before I put them together. Most of the parts just snap together. These seats just just snap in place uh, in the interior and I you can see I painted the the uh, shift handle silver. Um, I'll weather those. So there's not a lot of gluing. Everything seems to snap or screw together. Matter of fact, there's no gluing that I can tell. So I'm going to weather some of these basic parts, these inner door panels, um, the dash a little bit, using a combination of brown and black, and uh, then I'll start assembling it. Here's a finished door. The door handle and the mirror just press in. These panels just press on and they, they press on pretty hard so uh, they're not going anywhere again no no glue required Let's see if I can snap this one on here And you can see I did some weathering on those panels. I'll, I'll weather the outside of the doors. The doors themselves, mount like this, they open. There's a pin that drops in here, and then this piece snaps in the side like that. The hood snaps on. Uh, everything pretty much snaps together with a few screws. I'll continue to, to assemble here. I'm going to put some clear flat on these uh, seats before I snap them in. On the truck bed, uh, this bulkhead just snaps in place. The rear bumper snaps in place. Uh, the side rails actually screw on. And it just fits in here. And it's held on with a couple of small screws, so really the bed goes together quite easily. And I'm going to do some weathering on this after uh, it's all installed. And then the spare tire mounts on this pin right here with a screw. But I'm going to probably do some weathering on that before I put on. <laughs> this is this thing looks really good. Uh, I'm impressed. This bed then will fit to the body, something like that. And uh, it's a cute little truck. It's going to look really good. So I will continue. Uh, assembly here is pretty easy. This just snaps in place. The hood just snaps in place right here. And then the dash mounts up in here with a couple of screws that lock in the tabs for the um, for the hood hinges and I painted that black because that is the backing for this grate right here so I'll get that screwed in and then the interior just snaps in on top of that and there's a couple screws that hold it so I'll go ahead and uh, put those pieces together. That's <laughs> starting to look pretty cool. I, uh, I'm liking this little thing. With just a few quick snaps and I got that. It looks just, I think, great. And I think it'll scale well with the Tamiya trucks that I'm so fond of. So now um, I'm going to leave the doors off while I do a little bit of weathering on the body. Well, I'm actually going to do a lot of weathering. And, uh, and then I'll join these two pieces and put it on the frame because I want to see... Let's take a look here. I want to see where I can uh, fit my speed control, probably up in here. And uh, Yeah. So let's do some weathering. I'm going to talk about weathering just a little bit. So I've got this Tamiya Weathering Master, and these are like a, uh, a well, they're like a woman's rouge. 
This one happens to have orange rust and silver, which are two really great colors for weathering on this. So as an example, around the bottom edge of the door here, I can start building up a little silver to represent paint wear. And it's very subtle, but you sort of do this in, in layers. The orange rust can start to highlight, maybe hard to see here, some edges. So um, you can see how that builds up a little bit. Probably easier than the silver. So I'm going to start with these weathering masters, and that's one of the techniques I use. The other one I use is called dry brushing, and to do that, I've got some, some flat earth here. And dry brushing is exactly what it sounds like, so this earth is a good color to, to do it with. I use a brush, put a little paint on a piece of card here, and then run my brush until it's pretty dry. And then, I can take that dry brush, do it again, and just kind of build up some dry edges. Now I'm practicing on the bottom sides of the fender here. But it does the same kind of effect. It really starts to build up on the edges. So that'll simulate my mud. Uh, so I'm going to play with this for a little while. It needs to stay snapped in place. And then we'll see what it looks like. And I'll probably pop the clear windshield back out because once I'm done with the weathering, I'm going to spray everything with clear flat again. I'll weather the door separately so I can get in and weather the, the interior and the panels a little bit better. So let me play with this a little bit and I'll come back. Well, I've got my, my body um, done. It turned out really nice. Quite happy with it. I sprayed a clear flat over everything to fix it. Um, and uh, I got just the look I was hoping for. So now I'm going to mount it on a chassis. I've got to mount this little piece. It's two screws that hold it. It mounts right in here. I'll run the wires up. There's a there's a hole here to run the wires through for the servos, and I'll put my receiver here and my battery here. But that mounts, and then the body mounts, and I want to get that mounted and then decide where to put the speed control. I think I can probably put it down in this area someplace. So I'll go ahead and uh, screw that down and, and put the body on, and the tire has to go on after the body's on because it sits kind of right underneath the frame right there. So I've got the body mounted. Uh, there's a couple screws in the front here. Um, kind of hard to see, but they're up in here to hold it down. And one screw in the back and a couple of little snap clips that hold onto the frame. And that makes it really quite solid. Um, you can see the paint. I think it turned out really nicely. So now I'm looking at the bottom of it and there is plenty of room for me to mount a speed control down in this area and run the wiring up in front. Matter of fact, there's plenty of room to put a lot of stuff down here, maybe even the battery. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and find a speed control and wire that up. Yeah, as I thought, lots of room underneath here. I've got this little Power Hobby um, speed control and I'm just going to double sticky tape it right in there. Uh, and I will... Um, the kit actually came with this connector and I've got a battery that matches so I will solder this connector on there and run it up to the front and I will clip these and solder my motor wires onto them and then up in the front when you open the hood there's room for the battery in there 
you can see that and I'll put the receiver right in there so plenty of room to mount those in that should uh, get it running the LEDs for the headlights just snap in but the wires are bare so you have to be really careful uh, when you put all the wiring together that these don't touch um, I'm gonna the wires actually run up through here so I'm when I snap the body back on I'm going to uh, watch that pretty close I had the body off just so I could uh, get the lights in and do a little bit of extra work I'm going to put it back on I put the body back on and you can probably see where those wires come up so it's pretty easy to keep them separated I'll probably put a drop of glue on them or something just to be super safe and then that plugs into an open spot on the receiver and then I have my shift and my uh, steering servos uh, and now I'll put in the, the uh, speed control and uh, get that wired up I uh, decided to mount the receiver down here in the bottom uh, I'll probably make a little plastic cover for it later on off switch here speed control here tied up the wiring um, it all came together quite well the battery sits up underneath the hood here and uh, works fine you can see the headlights <laughs> they're really nice they're kind of a uh, a yellow color which of course looks good with this beat up old Toyota and uh, I used a, a six channel radio I've got that's high gear right there and then I've got this for low gear um, steering of course everything drives and runs nicely so I will uh, clean up my bench show it off a little bit and we'll take it outside and uh, drive it around okay so for crawler testing I have this big rock out in front of my house here it is a pretty tough obstacle yeah made it One of the things I was hoping for was that this would match well with my uh, Tamiya semi trucks. It matches really well. They call it 1 16th scale, but it's really bigger than that. Uh, probably close to 1 14th, maybe even 1 12th, somewhere in there. Uh, it's definitely smaller than 10th. Uh, but it looks good on the back of my uh, Globe Liner as a load. So in the future, I'll put some chains on it, and, uh, and that'll be my, uh, my truck load. Let's take a closer look at the finished product. So here's my finished truck. Um, I've got an on switch underneath here. You can see the, uh, the headlights. Um, they look good. Quite a bit of weathering I did on this, uh, which I think turned out really well. I cut the top off, removed the back, cut the uh, boards off of this bulkhead, uh, painted it, weathered it, I think it turned out really nice. It runs good. Um, there's the quick look at the bottom side again. Really a, a nice little kit. It fit good. It was easy to build. And I think it just looks great. I'm, I'm thrilled with it. And uh, it makes a nice load on my globe liner. So there you go. That's the WPL uh, Toyota Land Cruiser with a, with a wood stake bed. It... Uh, um, came from Remo Toys. You can look in the description for links. And uh, yeah, that's the build for today. Uh, thanks again for watching. Uh, please subscribe and uh, we'll see you next time.